So this hopefully will be in summer, but this fall we also have 48 students registered. So uh, the nonlinear control is offered every three years, okay? I, alternating with fractional auto mechanics. So I'm teaching fractional auto mechanics in the fall semester. So our, our research is basically focused on the San Joaquin Valley, the real world problems. So I don't want to elaborate. So just today to show you where you are in terms of drone education, okay? Drone education. So, so education, basically, we have a uh, different level of education ecosystem. So the outcome of the ecosystem is to what? Well, prepare a workforce for the drone industry like you, okay? When you finish, you feel like you are equipped with enough knowledge, get ready for the drone workforce, okay? And of, of course, the drone is also a magnet to attract the students so that uh, we have a campus STEM recruit, recruitment and retention. So you stay in the program. So that's another one. Community learners, we also do certificates for regular farmers who wants to be a pilot. So they want to get trained. So it's going through the University of California Merced um, extension program or a campus extension program. And of course, like even of today, as of today, so we have lots of things going on, I can tell you. Uh, for, uh, we have, uh, right now, we have a student in uh, elementary school to show the kids the drone, how uh, uh, it works, and make a small demo flight for them, okay? Even right now. I'll show you, i ask them to give me some of the photos. Today there is uh, uh, outreach activities there, so it's part of that. Of course, we also do uh, R&D applications, agriculture, environment. Some of you may know what is DH. It's not department head. DH stands for what? Digital heritage, digital heritage. You know, it's like uh, archaeology, cave exploration. Actually, later today, if you stay longer, later today, our team will convene here to make the trip. Oh, no problem, okay. You are recorded, actually. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> they are preparing a trip to Belize. There are more than 1,000 Mayan caves not explored. Why? We don't have enough archaeologists and not having enough money, uh, enough time. So the, the objects inside the caves, we don't have an inventory. We don't know what's there and what's lost or somebody looted. Get it? So we need to use drones to help the archaeologists to increase the throughput of their work such that what well, will enhance the performance. So it's called robots and the human work together. It's called co-robot. Co-robot or robotic. archaeologist co-archaeologist so these are very new concepts I will elaborate to you later on but let me return back to education so we prepare our uh, workforce as well for research okay for the research um, so education and research. So just to give you an idea, as my Mesa lab right now, we have, so today, we have two things going on. One is a drone demo in the elementary uh, school, 
So, elementary school. Drone demo. So, the demo. To show them that the drones are fun, I can learn a lot of things around the drones, okay? And uh, today we have two things happening. Uh, we're preparing the trip to Belize. Bring the drones to fly in and out of a very big Mayan cave to get raw data coming back. We can reconstruct the objects inside, okay? So uh, last, last week, so two weeks ago, uh, yeah, this is Monday, last Friday. Uh, this one is last Friday, okay? So last Monday to Friday, we were in Maryland, Baltimore flying drones to sniff the methane, okay? Sniff the methane. And uh, it's a successful uh, uh, event, okay? We pass through all the compliance check. And uh, of course, the mission itself is successful. So being able to fly is the uh, necessary condition, but not sufficient. Not sufficient. You need the proper compliance. You need the proper what? Liability coverage and public safety concerns, and so on and so forth. So we pass all of those. So this is, not, so then two weeks later, so we are going to go to Miami for ICUS, International Conference on Armenial System. So I am the uh, general co-chair for that. So it's a busy summer. It's a very busy summer. Actually, today there's another thing going on. I don't want to uh, elaborate too much, okay? Uh, we are talking about drone, drones deliver. <laughs> drones deliver means using drones, so you will get something out of it. So we have a UC Mercedes Venture Lab Venture Lab at the water. You haven't heard of that part yet. It's being formed. And the, uh, we can host six new companies, startup companies, incubate here in Castle. Okay, give you lots of incentives, okay? You basically give you money for you to be rich. Okay, you need to take some risks. So that, I hope, one of our group, one or more of our final project teams will be occupying the next door. Next door is something similar to this, but with bigger rooms. So each company can occupy a room. Um, so that's called UC Merced Venture Lab at at Water Incubator. Okay, so after this class, I will immediately go to the Venture Lab in Merced downtown to meet them, talk about the details about this. So I'm, I'm fighting on the background for um, options for you guys in the end of this course, okay? We'll see. So uh, things are going, a, a lot of things are still going on, okay? A lot of things are still going on, okay? So, of course, everything going on, we are on the summer uh, ME 190, okay? So this is also actively going on right now. I hope, yeah, you will you enjoy this course, okay? And don't try to miss it, but if you have to miss because like uh, you have leg issue or whatever, we record it, okay, we record it. Being here, interact with people instead of through Facebook, but through your face, uh, it's, is more productive and interact with my students there and use our office hour, you know, I'll ask them to come over here in the one, two, four. So hanging around is pretty good idea. You stay here, it's your right, it's your time, okay? Gain experience, okay? Gain experience. 
Let me return back. Uh, so that's that's the objective about outcome. Why we do the drone education, but how we really did that. So this is the elaboration about this uh, campus recruitment and retention. We do a lot of uh, tabling work to showcase our work to attract the people. People know what we do. Oh, you don't see it. Oh, now you see it. Okay. So, you know, we have a regular engineer week, research week, Bobcat day, previous day, or we do all this kind of thing. And uh, so, R&D, I have seen, shown you that this is a synergy across the UC system. Elaborate this one to you later on. So basically, uh, the application, we focus on precision ag, environmental, plus digital heritage, okay? And digital heritage. So I work with archaeologists, anthropologists, okay? So say for example, you have a large area, you know, you know where is potential, the ancient remains, so you know. You don't see it, but in a very high, and you probably can see it. So it's kind of interesting, use the drone to do that. So for community learner, we have, uh, uh, yeah, I have been part of this. Uh, uh, do you happen to know what is the NGSS? NGSS is called Next Generation Science Standard, right? So NGSS, uh, it, it, the kids right now, they, they need to pass all those new standard tests, okay? You, you are not, so. So we, we, we uh, kind of invented a notion saying that probably we use the drones today to motivate the students to learn a lot of things around the drones so that students get motivated to get into the STEM, okay? Science, technology, enge engineering, and math, STEM area, so. So that's uh, uh, surrounded by this, surrounded by this. Uh, it's in the news, uh, newspaper as well. And also you, you see Mercedes Extension has this training for uh, the community members, okay? And uh, we also trying to have an idea uh, to turn this as uh, not only a classroom teaching like this, for you to earn credits to graduate, get a degree. But also turn this site as a non-stop, continuously um, offer of uh, the training courses, certification courses, and risk assessment work. So uh, we are working on that, okay? A few years, two years ago, actually it's July 2015, you see that July uh, 2015, we even started to think in that way Okay, and the best practice training. And uh, so if your eyesight is good, can you read all this? The drone DMV. The drone DMV. I had a dream. It's a recording, right? So I had a dream that uh, we give people a stamp, people will give us a check. <laughs> That's called DMV. <laughs> Okay, but we're working towards that direction, we'll see, okay? But, um, you know, I'm a single faculty and I have limited bandwidth, so sometimes the moving speed is not as fast as we expected, but it's moving. So, but you need to have a vision to have a reality, right? So, yeah, that's my, my, my thinking. So, workforce industry, so I have a bragging rights here and uh, so for, for students influenced by us, uh, related to drones is well over 200, I can say, okay? And uh, we have a well-informed by the drone course over 100 uh, because we have 15 students per semester for engineering service learning on a drone, drone, there's a drone team. Okay, so actually, have you seen that? Uh, if you are curious, you can now go to uh, the website uav.ucmerced.edu. There is a website on that. That's our engineering service learning, okay? uav.ucmerced.edu. 
so, so I started in uh, f in the spring of 2014. So uh, we already have like six cohorts come out. So then uh, six times 15 is 90. Okay. Anyway, including AIA club, you know, well informed, research experience, and now this number is 18. I hope you guys will pass, most of you will pass the exam and get this number 30, double this, okay? Okay. And I have uh, students hired by uh, Google Project Win, uh, hired by Aero Environmental and uh, Ubu Amen Systems. Ubu in the Silicon Valley is a Uber driverless car project company as well. I have a former PhD student. He's working on with uh, Amazon Prime Air. Okay, the drone package delivery. Um, so, oh, he, I, I mentioned that. He's the person featured on this movie clip on the Aggie Air, using the drone, uh, fixed wing to do the remote sensing. There's a, a gentleman introducing. His, his name is Austin Jensen. He's working with Prime Air, okay? So that's uh, my uh, outcome point of view. But what's, what's inside of this? What are the elements inside of this strong ecosystem? So then uh, I want to share with you. So these are uh, called multi-tiered uh, US for STEM ecosystem. So you know, for tier zero, I help K-12 outreach. Like today, we have an elementary school demo to plant the seeds into this little kid's mind. Oh, drones are fun, and also I uh, can learn a lot, and has a future in terms of job and career, you know. And same to you. Uh, you, you should understand that the drone, learning drones, and will have a career, may have a career, okay? And also help to teach K-12 teachers, okay? These are for the teachers, TME program, Summer Institute. So then tier one is student clubs, so we have two, uh, right? Uh, you heard about from Brandon Stark that uh, uh, racing club. And he's organizing a UC system-wide drone racing, okay? And they just try to make uh, the big stadium, football stadium, as a racing space and make a special claim of their space so everything will be legal, okay? Uh, service learning I mentioned to you, uh, we started in spring 14, and it's pretty popular, it's, the class is full, okay? As well, for the fall semester. So, uh, extension, uh, we had a, a citrus aviation uh, division and extension trying to do U.S. training courses. And those training courses, of course, is just like one day type training, very focused. Not like this, this course is systematic. You get, you get a knowledge, um, it's called overall knowledge, okay? Overall knowledge. So extension is tier three. So, uh, so then, Tier four is what you are doing right now. It's called four credit courses. So uh, in terms of technical electives, 190, 190. So it's a lab intensive, okay, lab intensive. <coughs> so undergraduate independent research as well. Some of you, how many of you did independent study credits? How many of you did? You did, yes, okay, I remember. You should consider that option, okay? It's a formal for credit effort. So, so it's called 195 course. It's flexible, can be one, two, three, or four. But you can only use maximum four counted towards your degree program. So your uh, advisor will not allow you to have more than four to be counted. But you can do four. You can do more than four, but it's not counted towards your graduation. So affiliated with our lab, doing research. And I also will sponsor um, capstone project. How many of you will do capstone next semester? Only you, you? 
Yeah, I, yeah, yes, okay, great. So I think you guys can consider even, uh, even if you are in the same team, you need to consider to extend the summer project into a capstone, saying that, you know, we extend that to make bigger impacts, okay? So consider that option. Instead of sitting there waiting for them to give you a list of projects, you pick up, pick up one, I think you are allowed to propose one. You are. You can make petition. Okay. Okay. If you want, it will happen. That's my slogan. Okay. So only only thing is, you didn't even want it. How it can happen? Okay. If you need my help about make the capstone project happen, I can help you to make it happen. Understand? Seek your professor's help and support and I'm willing to help you. So that's uh, full credit. You can see uh, three aspects. One, you take a course or do independent research with a research lab like our lab or with other professors as well. And do a senior uh, capstone design. So it can be related to drones. We hosted quite a lot of um, capstone projects. We hosted. So, so they pick up this one and we are mentor. I think they are quite successful, okay? Uh, so of course, the last tier is graduate research and we do graduate education and uh, we are national and internationally and well, well known group in the world. Oh, I mentioned that drones deliver here. It's a program to explore the university resource to do innovation and entrepreneurship. So inside the university, we do have lots of resources for you, but many of you didn't know, okay? So you need uh, some education. And we also write proposals to create summer intern positions for you. And, uh, and for our final projects, US, I hope people will realize that this course is kind of like part of this ecosystem as well. We try to make you more aware of the ecosystem and try learn how to become an entrepreneur. Okay? And so Peter Sherman is our um, associate vice chancellor on this. So um, this after this class, I'm going to meet him. Okay, meet him. But remember, I prepared the slides in March, okay? Oh, no, now is the right, correct year. <laughs> okay. Um, so, I, our PhD students are very successful. I don't have time to go through them, but uh, most of them are certified drone pilots. And you can be a certified drone pilot as well, okay? So, I, uh, I encourage you to do that. So as you can see, our group uh, here uh, entertained many visitors and showcased our uh, ecosystems. So you guys are sitting here doing the full credit course. It's uh, a very interesting. Do you, guys, do you know who is this guy? Winston. Ron Winston. Yeah. He's at uh, almost uh, 80s. And he can learn how to fly in two minutes, okay? So you can do much better than him, right? Okay. So I encourage you guys to, to feel confident, okay? To achieve something, okay? Not only earn four for credits. So if you say, oh, I sitting here, I only need four credits to, to graduate. That's not an objective. That's a byproduct, okay? You need to have something higher, you have bigger. And this is our outdoor, we didn't go inside that day, we did a tour, I gave you a tour, right? So if you go inside, you look outside, something like this, okay? All right, so this is our playground. And this is our playground, it's here. And outside in the backyard, we have this playground. And I have a bigger playground in here, is in the Vernapur and also good companions. Uh, and this is our, uh, uh, the 
solo platform. I have five sets of solo, so we can feed uh, five companies. Okay, so uh, you can use this to have some sort of flights of your own design, and do some interesting things, convince the investor, making your pitch slides. Okay, so these are the companies they formed. We uh, did the the, uh, the field tests. Uh, so, of course, these are the different companies, different companies. Uh, you know, uh, there's a last, last uh, four semester we offer the course here. So everybody looks happy. And, uh, so this is our methane project. So you see the wiredness, so you can see it's, 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 so, so, so this is from PG&E. These are the uh, cylinders uh, of uh, methane, con concentrated methane. They can release, so we know we have ground truth. If you don't have a ground truth, you sniff, you don't know how much it is, so it is not considered as scientific data. That's why we call our drone as a scientific data drones. So we need ground truth to make it at the uh, make it at scientific level. So this is uh, uh, we are our classroom. Our classroom is roughly here. Okay, there is a restroom in here. There's a restroom in here. There's a restroom inside here as well. Okay, so you orientate yourself. And then I told you this is our hangar. I have net. So this is the one I have. Okay, this is my, my space, okay? And yeah, I call it the scientific data drone test site, okay? So this is our playground, Out, outdoor and indoor, okay? Here is indoor. So then this is the reserve. Do you know where is the Merced? You say Merced? So uh, this is the lake. This is dot, this is roughly the dot is our UCMRC campus. And this whole thing is here. This, this radius of uh, 26 square miles in red is our playground, okay? It's almost the size of Singapore. Well, half of this, probably. All right, so I have some other things I can share with you later on, but I, I, I believe this morning, I believe this deck of slides will get you further orientated about where we are, what research, you know, why you feel you know you are in the right spot, doing the right thing at the right time. Okay. So let's switch to something a little, little bit more. Any questions at this point? Ask some questions. Okay, good. What? I like odd questions. Be honest, three sigma. Okay, methane is twenty-five times worse than CO two, and uh, we we believe. Uh, it's not we believe. It is scientifically evident today that all the extreme weather we experienced in the recent years, extreme weather, is because of the methane. And we don't have a good understanding how much our human, our um, animals release into the air. We do not understand, we don't have uh, good measurements of how much we have. And especially it seems like disasters right now <coughs> because global warming will thorn the permafrost for those trapped frozen methane get released into the air. <coughs> yes, so it's becoming a positive reinforcement process. That means we're doomed it's getting worse and worse. So it's quite urgent for us to understand 
the consequences of methane and its quantity and its impact to our weather system. So in Siberia, you heard about uh, methane burp. You haven't? Burp. Oh, uh, methane burp? Yeah. Because of the Siberia in Russia, that frozen trapped methane will get burped out because of the sawning, global warming, and it's very, very significant. And I, I told you it's 25 times worse than CO2 in terms of greenhouse uh, gas uh, issue, right? So people were thinking that to use the burning, to, to burn those methane into CO2, okay? You burn it, turn, so that make 25 to 1. That's still effective, right? So then a uh, few years back, somebody contacted me about flying a suicide, suicide drones and drop and ignite it. It becomes a flying match or lighter. To, 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 to burn it. It's not a bad idea, right? So you, you turn 25 to 1. So people were talking about that. And uh, I can tell you, uh, the guy who approached us discussed this type of uh, optimal burning issue uh, is um, Larry Page's brother. Okay, You know Larry Page, right? The, who co-founded the Google. So, and he was here, okay? He was here. We, we talked about it. So it's kind of interesting. But now it looks like they have more urgent things to do, so this project didn't really get started. The burn methane using a drone by a Chinese, funded by US, and happened in Russia, probably is very complicated. And the most important thing is, is consequences, uh, not control. What, what about you have very large scale explosion? Okay, so uh, it, it's difficult. But the idea was probably not 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 bad. It's turned 25 times into one times, you know. But um, but anyway, uh, it's uh, uh, United States government put into a lot of money right now, every year from two years ago to understand the methane. So methane mapping is not only interesting, but also very important to human as a species. But uh, I didn't get any government funding. I got uh, private sector's funding. It's from pg and &E. um, yeah. Because they care about methane leak in the gas pipelines, especially in the community setting. When you smell something, it's already too late. Want to do something better before you smell it? We can already know that well, th this is called fugitive. Fugitive, it's escaping it's tiny. Then we can capture that, then take advanced measures. Of course, if we can do it, that's very meaningful. It's good for health. So say, for example, you have a pipe leaking in your house, you didn't know. But when you smell it, your sensor is not sensitive enough. You know, Probably you already inhaled too much or more than enough uh, methane that will damage your health. You understand? OK. So we are uh, one of the, no, we are the very unique leaders in this field right now, doing the work. Okay. So, talking like this probably add your um, better knowledge about your perspectives, but they will reduce my lecture time. So, can I make a petition to you? You guarantee you will click the file in the week one folder that at least you will go through the slides. Okay, if you go to that, you will be fine with any exam questions I designed for you. I, I, I'll only do things that is only slides. If I talk like method 25 times uh, worse, that kind of knowledge, I'm not going to test you. 
So any test is based on the slide. So you have to go through the slides. So then I don't have a pressure, time pressure, to go through the slides with you like, like very dull and formal way. So I prefer to have a question, you trigger my discussion. You know, I like that. Thank you for that question. Good. <coughs> so without worrying about losing time, so I'm opening for another question. Okay. So you don't, then I'm moving to the next part. So you're saying the best way to check for a leak is not to walk around with a match? <laughs> uh, that is too too uh, too dense. If you it dense to the point you can you can ignite it. It's explosive environment. Yeah, explosive. But that triggers another interesting thing. So when you have a drone, that uh, drone itself has some electricity, uh, you know, electric moving parts in there. Maybe it's a tiny, you know, arc, electric arc in there. Maybe the motor. So it can ignite if the density is high. So, so anti-explosive drone will be very expensive to make. I was asking, I was asked to look into this, to fly the drones in the underground mining environment. Okay? So if you have something emergent, uh, then you need to go to there and there's very high uh, concentration of CO1, okay? Carbon monoxide, okay? So I have a deck of slides talking about classifications and applications, okay? So I have another deck of slides that we plan to go through as the next part is on applications. No, this is a history. So talking about components. Uh, when we take this U.S. as a system, okay, as a system. So when we finish the, so we'll leave this one as the next section, okay. So we are going to uh, quickly go through the classification and the application part. So nothing to do with your quiz question, okay. All right, so this application this classification application part is actually uh, we base this U.S. applications in chapter two, chapter two, okay, chapter two. Uh, can you circulate around the textbook for everybody again? This textbook? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the free textbook is for the first edition. This is the second edition, okay? They gave me two free copies. Uh, this is for our lab. You can use this one here, okay? But I already scanned some of the important chapters. Um, three chapters of a book is considered as okay for fair use, okay? Fair use. Um, so classifications and applications are main topic for this remaining um, 40 minutes. Okay, and uh, so let's see what's in the name. Uh, you have heard lots of uh, uh, abbreviations, Unmanned Aero System, Small Unmanned Aero Systems, UAVs, RPAS, uh, called Remoted Pilot Aircrafts, and uh, RPA. So when I have shown all these abbreviations in here, that means I expect you know. So when you are expert, you should be expert on those jargons and abbreviations, okay? So you should know what is UAS, right? You also should know what is UAV and RPAS and RPA, okay? Fair enough. So last time I heard the class complain about, I put emphasis on this, abbreviations. 
Yes, I do. If you claim you are a drone expert, you don't know even what is UAS stands for, what does that mean? You, know, you are not a real expert. <laughs> so, be careful. I, I'm going to use these abbreviations to check with you. You have to memorize it. Okay. And you talk like an expert using the right abbreviations, right? So like you say NASA, you don't know what is NASA, then, then you know, it's a problem, okay? So lots of acronyms for the UAVs, but V stands for vehicle, it's only for that vehicle. So we like to use the, the, the word S. S stands for system, the system including vehicle and others, okay? We'll see what's in the system after the break, okay? the brick. So how many aero vehicle, how many air vehicle, <coughs> aircraft vehicle, aerospace vehicle, so the A, a lot of A's here, and all the different uh, interpretation of you also, un in, 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 uninhabitant, uh, uninhabited aircraft vehicle. But if you, if, if, if you, if you put, uh, uh, let's say, a frog, inside a, a drone. So then it's not a UAV according to that. It's inhabited. <laughs> Is that true? Uh, that's funny. Maybe that's a secret. Yeah, yeah. So you put a, you put a small animal in there, or, or bug. Put a real bug, okay? <laughs> put ladybug in there, so then this is not a UAV anymore. <laughs> Is that true? Uh, so there's also upper atmosphere vehicle, unmanned autonomous vehicle. This is not necessary to be flying, you know. Anyway, so you need to be careful about what we imply, okay? But there are some rules to follow, and that's what I heard it may not be true. And for French-speaking people, they love to use this word drones. It's most popular. They use drones much more often than using UAS. However, in the United States, especially in the more academic world, we feel compelling to use UAS instead of UAV. Because S is bigger than V. Okay? Get it? So we not only do the V, we also do anything around it is system. Okay, so for about international, especially for the defense related people, uh, useless, uh, they call it pilot in a loop, using a pilot sitting in Texas. The drone is in Afghanistan, they are you know, operating it. So it's called remote piloting. Okay, it's, they use RPAS. And in uh, NATO, Europe, and the United States, in the in the military setting, they use OPAS a lot. So you can use a use a mouse and use a map, and you, you can joystick something. Actually, the the, the 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 aircraft is flying very different place, far away. It's called OPAS. Okay. okay. OPAS. Um, so, but uh, on the internet, in the popular uh, culture, we use UAV and drones, okay? Which is okay, okay, which is okay. Okay, the next slide will give you more detailed class. So, different people, they classify the drones or RPAS in different way. Just give you know, one of the opinions, it's like this. So how to group them, how to classify them, uh, there are different rules, but uh, uh, this is according to the RPAS classification. Uh, you can use line of sight, okay? Line of sight meaning you always can see it. So there are two types, line of sight and not line of sight, <laughs> okay? You see it or not see it, so visual line of sight, VLOS. Okay, we lost. 
and the BV loss is beyond the visual line of sight, beyond visual line of sight. And the people also use the energy. Uh, so they have class 1A, 1B, 1C, ABC, 2A, 2B, 3AB, 4AB, and 5. These are re reserved. So as you go, the height is less than 400. Uh, for class 3B and above is higher than 400 feet. It's 130 meters-ish. Okay. Um, so M is uh, takeoff ma uh, mass, okay? Takeoff mass, okay? Uh, takeoff mass, um, 1.5 kg is very small, and less than 7 kg, also small. Less than 20 kg, less than 20 kg, so these are the small UAVs. 150 kg is a little bit bigger, okay? It's too big, okay? All right, so um, don't have to remember this, okay? You don't have to remember this classification. We probably don't use the RPAS classification. We probably only focus one. That's called small U.S. or not small U.S. Where you draw the line? They use the takeoff weight, the weight, okay? 55 pounds. 55 pounds is the line to draw. If you use something above 55 pounds takeoff weight, it's considered as not small UAS, okay? So be careful. Okay. So, and our, our course focus on Small, that means less than 55 pound takeoff weight, and non-military drones, okay? Not armed, there is no gun on it, no shooting, no spraying, nothing released from the drone, okay? Including the bullets, chemicals, okay? So this course only focuses on civilian applications, okay? Civilian applications. Small amen air systems. So here uh, you, you can uh, uh, NATO classification. How many of you knows what is NATO? Great job, great job, great job, good job. Okay. So treaty organization, uh, North Atlantic Treaty Organization, is a European organization, including the United States as a defense organization. So, so then the, the take of weight is less than 150 kg is considered as class one. Class two is, so this is different to the United States, okay? And also the uh, normal employment for what, okay? Uh, normal operational attitude. The AGL is above ground level. Okay. Above, uh, so these are the acronyms. You already learned this B loss is beyond line of sight. Line of sight, line of sight. And uh, they have example different drones. So these drones are pretty expensive. It's not supposed to be owned by a person. Okay, it's more defense military related. So I want to add more. So small aircraft, small I mean, aircraft system for civilian application, what else? Low cost, okay? Low cost, small aircraft, small I mean, aircraft system for civilian applications. That is the, the three-leg stool for this course that we only focus on this category of drones, okay? So you see the drones we use in our lab. I claim that we have more than 100 drones in the lab. They are all low cost, okay? Very low cost. So we cannot do very high cost. I call this is a gra grassroots notion to make it cheaper, accessible, so farmers can use it. 
Uh, so there are some interesting, uh, maybe not very nice uh, acronyms like uh, MEL or HEL. Uh, <laughs> okay, so this is um, attitude level, attitude level. So there are different classes. So we are here, small and micro UAVs, okay? So like quadcopters, stuff like that. So low attitude, long endurance, they fly not very high, okay? And there's a medium attitude, long endurance, okay? MQ-1, okay? Global Hawk is called Hell, high attitude, long endurance, okay? And then this is a high attitude, long endurance, very high, okay? It's like Okay, RQ-170, okay? Uh, so people on the ground don't even see it, and don't feel it, you know? It's for civilian, surveillance missions. So what today we need, uh, my dream is to have low attitude and long endurance, okay? At low cost. low cost. So you have a head, you have a quad rotor, you can only fly like our valid mission time is nine minutes, nine minutes. People keep saying, oh, we can do 15 minutes. You don't want to do that. At that last few minutes, you may have risk. You don't want to do that. So we only do nine minutes to guarantee success of the mission. Okay. So the battery is still a bottleneck for everybody. However, the good news is happening. We have a brilliant colleague, Professor Abu Chuang, is doing uh, um, fuel cell research. So who is working with Professor Chuang's lab? You? Okay, so he said he's going to try this summer to fly the helicopter for three hours. Is in, is in the drone. Is that true? We already have that uh, battery here, right? Hopefully. We'll see. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, so that's from the height and the endurance. So you have different angle, different method to do the classification, okay? And categorization. So then uh, if you uh, do platform, you have fixed wing, rotor wing, right? So you have one rotor, is one rotor helicopter, you have two rotor. And there are also other things like uh, airship versus flapping wing like birds, okay? People are doing something on that. Is it possible to have hybrid? Can be uh, vertically take off uh, still, um, so it's called hybrid, so it's still possible, okay? okay. So that's based on uh, the platform. You can also do uh, classification regarding the propulsion. Use jet propulsion, burning gas, or use electricity. So it's the ele electrical air aircraft or uh, gas power. So there's a two categorization. So categorization and classification is depending on what angle you look at. Do you agree? So now we are talking about the platform, uh, fixed wing versus rotor wing, about this aerodynamic propulsion part. There could be uh, hybrid UAVs that can, like helicopter, get off, stay, and move like fixed wing. So it's already there, I know it. So. And uh, so size endurance, we talked about hail mail. And then uh, you have a rough idea about those parameters. Let me just impress you a little bit. So this is very high. It's, I think it's even higher than the civilian airliners, right? And uh, this is the payload. You can put this amount of pounds. So then it's like uh, you can put 20 people there, OK? Uh, 35 hours of flight, so it's global hawk. But do you know roughly how much uh, a piece? 
many? <laughs> I think the unit is a million. Okay, million US dollars. And the, this is compared to 70, this is 50,000 feet altitude. And it's like one and a half day type of flight time. And uh, this is it's a smaller version of that. So it's a global hawk versus uh, predator. Okay, predator. So predator is a male UAV, okay? Medium altitude, long endurance. So there are some tactical ones. Uh, it's also very high altitude and many hours of flight. 25 kg payload is reasonable, okay? Uh, reasonable. Okay. But this is also very expensive, I believe. I think it will be quarter million ish. Yeah. So if you put in this cube, you are going to see endurance is this. Uh, you have a high attitude is like that. So that direction is uh, um, tactical, meaning uh, not strategical. <laughs> what is the opposite of tactical? Strategical, right? Strategic meaning you have longer, you know, not immediate purpose. So this is, uh, to be tactical, you have to be immediately hit. So the flight height is low, okay? So this tactical basic is low, low, medium, and high. So, um, so Along this, uh, attitude is low and endurance is low is here. And uh, what we learn is here, very small here. Our, our drones will be in this corner, very corner. But of course, this one is very expensive. Attitude is very high, so this is called predator maybe. Global hawk is here, predator, predator is here, uh, A and B different versions and so on and so forth, okay. Uh, regarding applications, we have, uh, if you go to the internet, you will see everywhere, uh, but what is the top three, what are the top three application in, uh, demand? So think about it. So you, you may think, uh, maybe agriculture, or maybe. So can you read insurance? wind turbine, first aid, agriculture, security, gas flare inspection, uh, flash flood warning, organ transportation, uh -uh. wildfire conservation, oil spill monitoring, preventing shark attacks, railway safety, shipping emission, cargo delivery, uh, cinematography, journalism, search and rescue, Reforestation, like you plant the seeds, you just do that. Uh, construction site management, and so on and so forth. There's a lot of stuff. So, do you think the 20 is uh, the use cases? So, this is just very limited. The total number of applications is actually infinity, limited by your imagination. Okay? That's why each of you should start to think about what's your use case, very special, okay? Start to think about it. So I hope by the end of this course, some of you will consider in the coming four or rest of the semesters you have with user Merced, even you graduated, you can still use that uh, venture lab at that water resources here. This is next door to this AD, this is 860, the 870. It's very big space inside with sinks, with some common areas of instruments. Very beautiful. Okay. I'll figure out a way to get you access to that room and have a tour about it. So drone deli diversity, there are so many things, okay? And these are the price tags you can take a look. <laughs> Phantom. 
Okay, scan eagle at this. So this is 30, 93 million dollars. Okay. Okay, 93 million dollars. Okay, so you got an idea. So these are the parameters you can compare. I'll skip this one. So applications. In this chapter, they cover applications in the following. So this is a category covered by that textbook. I scan that chapter for you to read in details. So remote sensing, industrial uh, uh, aero filming photo uh, photography, R ISR and ER, uh, atmospheric information collection, and uh, physical interaction with substances, like using the drone to do something. Say for example, you have a gripper, put it on the drone, you, you can release it, or you know, something like that. So it's called aerial manipulation. Aerial manipulation, okay? So I give you an uh, interesting thing. How many of you seen the giant sequoia? And there is a hypothesis, thank you. So I tell you that the tree is very ancient. You don't want to do any in invasive approach, climbing the tree, get the leaves sampled at different height. So there is a need. People uh, say the giant sequoia tree at different height, the leaves with the gene in the leaves, genetic information in the leaves will be different. Who knows? So there is a need. You need to sample the leaves at given height. <laughs> you go that height, get the leaves. If you climb it, you kind of invasive. It's not allowed. So what you should really do, so they, they need a flying scissor, basically, and tweezer. <laughs> so I'm talking to somebody to sell them an idea. They should need a drone with a, with a gripper. <laughs> Get this. So this is another potential idea you can think about it when you add what they call physical interactions with the environment. Or using a drone to do a painting on the wall. Because otherwise, you put a human, put a ladder, you know, that's hard, right? And so on and so forth. Think about it, okay? A lot of opportunity. So, so here, I'm going to go through. Uh, so this is a chapter about how many pages? About uh, 16 pages. Can you go through that, read it, okay? I'll put this chapter in our folder. But the most important thing is this one. Uh, it's, uh, Somebody, AUVSI, somebody did some statistics, okay, statistics. Um, they put the first 1,000 commercial exemptions, people, um, so, applied FAA to give them exemptions, meaning they are legal to make money um, from flying, okay, okay. So. Previously, I told you is no way, no pathway for you to fly to make money as a commercial company to fly drones to do that. So, as of uh, last summer, there are about this amount of companies there. Do you know what is the number today? I haven't even checked. There is a link you can check, and also you can do statistics for that. I think I will, I will, I will release that. Uh, Probably I put in the announcement for you uh, about that information. Uh, so these guys um, did first 1,000 and did statistics. Okay, the statistics. Uh, so. I told you that in February, February 2012, FAA was tasked to do reauthorization, meaning in plain languages, they were asked by the Congress, say, hey, FAA, figure out a way to open aerospace for private entities to fly drones to make money. 
So they say, oh, okay, so they figure out a way and they start to open the door, start to approve. That process is called the exemption process. Okay? So there are, um, I think now this number is not four digits. I'm pretty sure it's five digits. Okay? Okay, more than 10,000. That means this is a big company pool for you, for your future job. Or you, you, you add one more number on this number. Okay? You start your own business. So it's pretty exciting, isn't it? So they do states, top 10 states by the exemption numbers. Who is the first? Of course, California, right? Of course. So, a second, Florida, okay? So, so we don't want to do the, so then in terms of areas, uh, what are those top areas? It's aerial photography, it's like 50% of them. Remember, they surveyed 1,000. So half of them are doing the photography. So meaning, in your future, you should not be a, a yet another company in this category. You should do something different. It's too crowded, right? And the second is real estate. 30%, 35%. Uh, of course, you may add, not add up as 1,000 because the company may do multiple things using drone to do multiple things. So air inspection, agriculture is only 16%. Okay, so infrastructure ins inspection, construction. I think construction is important as well. So think about these areas, okay? Utility inspection, Environmental, this is supposed to be bigger, but I don't know. R&D, you know, anyway. Uh, people are using the paving, <laughs> uh, risk management, meal operation, marine time, uh, aero communication services, railway, uh, railroad inspection, security, market research, <laughs> anyway. so. Let's focus on agriculture spotlight. So this report will give you a summary of different sections. So we get a rough idea. They give you how many fixed wing, how many rotary wing, what is the average weight, uh, what a percentage of those has a very small UAS, what is average endurance time, okay. Uh, so it's about 40 minutes. But most of them is from the fixed wing, because the fixed wing is longer endurance. Okay, our fixed wing is about one hour and 20 minutes. Okay, and my, uh, my student, uh, my former PhD student is still leading the Aggie year. He gave a talk, so you have a rough idea what they can do right now. I'll give you a number, okay? So it's, uh, 200 minutes, 200 miles, okay, and 2,000 acre coverage. So that's the current number they already can achieve in Utah, my previous group, okay? The, the platform can do this. 200 minutes, 200 miles, 2,000 acres coverage, okay? Our time is almost there, so let me see one more. Real estate. So then real estate, can you see? You can see in the back? So uh, 22 fixed wing, rotor wing is the majority. Can you see that? Because real estate is small. Compared to this one, you have a more uh, uh, fixed wings, okay? okay? This one is uh, m more than almost half a micro UAS, okay? Endurance is 20 some minutes, okay? 
And there's some descriptions about this category. Okay? Uh, similar, uh, film and TV platforms is only, f only one fixed wing. <laughs> okay, only one fixed wing. Is that this interesting? And uh, then the rest are rotary wing. Okay. Average endurance is like 17 minutes. Okay. Um, so sometimes you need to ask the question oh, I need endurance 20 minutes versus 40 minutes. But at what price? Okay. Uh, uh, my JPL partner told me that uh, they spent fifty thousand dollars to have a quad to be able to fly forty-five minutes, which is impressive, right? But the price is also impressive. I only need to have five hundred dollars to be able to fly fifteen minutes. So three times of endurance that will cost me like more than how much? Hundred times. Um, perhaps fifty thousand is fifty uh, ten times. No, oh uh, yeah, one hundred times. So that's very nonlinear, right? Not proportional. Okay. So cost. I'm very cost sensitive, but I'm glad to tell you it's being recorded. That uh, I have. A, it's not secret, but uh, it's. Uh, a reality. So our lab right now can do um, 45 minutes flight using the quad, okay, at $800. Okay, so impressive. If we want to know, want to see that platform, yeah, when we, yeah, probably I will bring my student here and show you what we have. Very impressive. We flew it, we sing it, we recorded it, and, uh, and we bought multiple such kind of platforms. So if you ask my PhD student, Tebiao, he will tell you how useful this is. Okay? So previously he needs to take off and land three times. Now he can do one and finish in one shot. So it's efficient still low cost, but we are tr checking the li reliability, okay? So endurance, oil and gas, I think we are one of the leading players in this field in terms of methane sniffing. So in this thing, there are some fixed wing for long distance. Fixed wing usually is for long distance, okay? Flying with flare and mission critical magazine, and they quoted some of these things. Okay. The construction is another big. So even our 2020 project has a, a weekly drawn documentation of the progress. Okay. With that, I think our timing is 10:50. So. We'll take a break until 11.05, 15 minutes break, 11.05. Then we continue until 12.30, okay? All right, so. It, it was a secret. Uh, it was a secret. Yeah. Is that with Alan? Was so that with Alan? Yeah. Oh no 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 Alan. Uh, it's Greg. Greg. Uh, Greg Mellos or different Greg? Greg Nunez. Different Greg. Mellos is this is not available. I didn't see I him. I know he wanted me to help him train Garrett's crew. Garrett. Garrett, John? Oh, he want to be tra be trained. He wanted some students to help be trained. Oh, I haven't heard anything from him. So, is he around? No idea. So, uh, lack of communication. So, one of the ideas I had doodled the other day was to 
Which one? On like a dirigible, long duration drone. Yeah, we need that. We need that. Because like uh, even for this Venopro is big enough, you have to have a multiple takeoff some land. So we need some bigger platform. Just have the airframe just entirely inflatable. Well, let's just have the payload. Inflatable? That was the, maybe the guess was basically having something. Inflatable? Yeah, where it has, ins like maybe outside's a rigid shape, uh, but inside it's got bladders that hold hydrogen or something like that. Uh, and then hydrogen instead of helium, because I just, helium, the problem is you can't produce helium. Oh, uh, hydrogen is that it's flammable yeah. and you're going to probably involve some safety. You need, you need a pressure to hold it. Yeah. Do you have enough pressure, like a strength of like material? Sure, it exists. Then you deform a lot. Because the idea was that you have a, uh, I need to take seat. shell on the outside. Yeah. But have it be more of a free screen because when you see like those dirigibles flying in the sky, they always fly really lazy. You know, the wind blows and it kind of drifts. And so the idea of having a like, really long flight time, hopefully. Uh -huh. That'd be what I'd want to write it on. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, you got the Mechtronics, then this course is easier. Oh, this course is, you know. This, the Mechtronics is, 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 is a little bit stretch to everyone. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know it. My one complaint. I risk, I risk myself to lose my reputation by dragging everybody very hard. I think the one thing that I wish with Megatronics was if we were given the final project a little earlier. Like have it okay, I, there are quite part of the, quite big part of the complaints from my class in uh, feedback. I read it already. It's actually induced by my uh, TAs, lab TAs. So they are, uh, they have rooms for improvements. Yeah. So. I don't know, but um, maybe we, we hire some undergraduates as a TA. They can do a better job. Well, well, former undergraduates, because I finished this semester, so if you willing to pay. I'm trying to advocate this because graduate students are also stretched the very thing. So the TA work may not be their um, top priority sometimes. You want to do a master there? You need to uh, have your parents pay it. Because usually, usually professors will not give uh, scholarship. Oh yeah, I'd like to do a master. It's just I'd like to get money first before I do that. Yeah, that's the problem. Mm -hmm. The school would pay for it. That'd be most well, schools are paid for that. Like maybe companies sometimes, but yeah, I've heard schools only help with masters. Masters not usually is not considered as for re, uh, RA position, research assistant position. It's usually for PhD. And he, I graduated an ME master student. It was not a very good experience. Yeah. You barely warm him up and he's finished. That's the problem. Well, but like, 
thing about it is the ME doctorate, there's not really, it doesn't seem like there's as many opportunities as a doctor as a master's or... Doctors meaning you have guaranteed, guaranteed funding. When we admit you as a PhD student, you are guaranteed to get funding. So if you want to do a graduate study here, you have to say, I want to do PhD to get attention. Otherwise, people don't really serious about your application. And every other university is the same. I mean, good research university like us, like you see Berkeley, like that. So they put emphasis on research on PhD students. And uh, for, it's a common understanding for well-informed people that Master degree is an exit degree. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I can see that. What do you mean by exit? Like you Meaning you drive. cannot go forward, you take exit. In highway, in other words, you are not allowed to move forward, <laughs> you get exit. <laughs> Did you get it? Mm -hmm. So you say, oh, I got a master's degree from UCS uh, or ME from UC Berkeley. People will ask, why not PhD then? The only explanation is you, are f you failed to, to get qualified to continue as a PhD student. So how so. hard is it to go into a PhD? There is some rejection rates. Like uh, Berkeley, I heard is half. Yeah, I, I don't know the rates. Yeah, Berkeley is half. Uh, probably. If you see somebody, somebody got a master degree from Stanford or master degree from P Berkeley, uh, that means they didn't succeed. Okay, I mean not everybody. Most likely, there are some exceptions. They decide not to proceed. So it's not, it's been not, uh, it's not, uh, not stopped by others. They choose to stop, but no difference, <laughs> didn't, right? So. Yeah, it's one of those things, there are definitely projects that I'd like to continue, uh -huh. that I wish I had more time to do uh -huh. as a bachelor's student. And you need to maintain 3.0 GPA as a minimum. PhD at have a 3.5 or higher? Uh, yes. Any, any coursework with, uh, with a C is not counted. Anything below B minus is not counted. So it's drop it. It's just like everything below C minus is not counted for graduation, right? Like D, D plus is not counted. You should retake. Is that, is that right? Mm -hmm. Well, it's considered failed. And I thought you'd get on probation if you get below a certain average for a semester. Mm. Yeah. Yep, it's quite hard. It's open. Oh. I, I don't have access to that door as well. I don't know why. I have access to it. You have? I think I do. That's odd. <laughs> uh, can you do experiment? Yeah, sure. Oh, not that one. This one? This one? This one? See if I can do this one. Double check. I'm very surprised if you do. I don't think so. <laughs> it's wrong, right? That's 
That's a lot of work. <laughs> Is he still doing Looney and... Uh, uh, Looney is more for... Yeah, he's more on the onion. He's growing onions. You know, this is a year two of the onion project. You know. So he's focusing on biochar amendments. So... And Garrett's considering continuing where Brendan left off? That's the purpose, yeah, that's the purpose, but he's not decided yet, so he's probably will pursue um, some other opportunities, like having his own company. Like Brendan? Oh, you know Brendan Smith had his company? Yeah, he did his PhD or he... We pressed the pause key for him to keep something here and moving forward, we come back to finish, maybe after 30 years, uh, I don't know. So he's trying to mimic Bill Gates and <laughs> something, it's called dropouts. So. But so far he's not considered as dropouts, he's considered as academic leave. So. Yeah. yeah. I don't know applications, but I know that there is probably a demand for something that has long duration. Right. Drone crab fishing. Yeah. Drone fishing? Drone crab fishing. There you yeah. go. Crab fishing, yay. Yeah, like, uh, have you ever seen uh, uh, Deadliest Catch? Mm -hmm. It's like instead of sending people on ships in like below zero weather, just send drones out, they'll, you'll have to figure out the waterproofing issue. We have some experience regarding waterproofing. Yeah, there was the water drone, right? Yeah, we have a water drone. Yeah. How did that get? Water drone, we get funded for uh, a year, and uh, we didn't have another student put on this. Well, then we shifted to another topic. Is right now, the, the, the Tupperware container is the body, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we, we do have a, a what, they, what do you call it? Uh, yeah, 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 that um, container. plastic container. Use for uh, waterproof seals then. Just like get Probably. a tape or something. Probably like JD Weld or something. <laughs> <laughs> nice. No, that, that was just something I remember seeing in a pile in the uh, in the lab. Right. We were trying to see what airframes we wanted to. Uh, borrow variables project. Uh -huh. Yeah, we, I think uh, we have resources. All we needed to do is to find ideas, what to do with it. And undergrads to throw out the problem. I think you guys are young, you don't, you know, you don't, yeah, you don't feel failure, okay? We don't have wives and kids to take care of, I think is what it means. Uh, yeah, so yeah. We don't have a... Uh, and like, oh, we're, we're, we, you and me, we're like a dime that doesn't, you know. We, we fail, we could just throw another 12 at the problem for free. Uh, yeah. Undergrads, you know, they're paid. So, you know. Yeah. Well, except for reimbursement. Yeah. That makes sense, actually. Yeah. I hope... I hope this course is uh, partially helping uh, everyone to think about their potential of being an uh, entrepreneur. I've never thought about it, honestly. So, so now it's time to think about it. So. Yes, I mean, so far the two ideas would be uh -huh. either something more like a dirigible balloon to hold, to try to get it to hold a fixed point in the sky. Uh -huh. It's kind of the, the curiosity. Mm -hmm. And then the other one was uh, try to make it fly longer uh, using mm. less power. Mm. <laughs> so I think the main crutch with 
those like multi rotor applications really is the, the battery. That's yeah, however, it takes a lot more energy than flying a cord path. Jessica Palmer. She graduated. You know her? Jessica? No, I don't know. But uh, uh, she started at the drone racing club. Yeah. So. I remember training her at Mooney. Yeah, you. Last summer. Okay. You, you work together? Yeah, I worked with Yami and Andy mostly. Yeah. Yeah. They graduated, I worked with Alan last summer. Alan is very good. He's willing to help, the most important thing is. Yeah, last, then I had an internship, and then last semester there was just no time. Yeah, just announced the new drone. Capstone and mechatronics taking so much time. Cough, cough. Um, <laughs> the, I gave mechatronics the time it deserved, which is too much. Mm. I do think overall Megatrops is a very interesting class. But uh, I keep getting negative comments. So they, they, people don't give, don't appreciate. So I, but I don't feel very sad. You know, I feel like I'm doing the right thing to give people a hard time. You know, uh, because otherwise everybody is staying in the comfortable zone, don't get a real progress in their learning. So that's what I mean. The idea of you don't reach enlightenment from the class unless you're truly challenged in it. Yeah, that's sometimes. I heard that if a professor is trying to lower the standard and please the people, to please the class, they don't really get good rating. The only part is whether you show you care. Your passion, inspiring the class. It's not real the matter of how much load you put. I wish I had TV, I was my TA, that'd be funny. Uh, so, okay, uh, I'll tell him. Hey, uh, are you guys coming back? Uh, maybe one or two missing, but uh, it's being recorded, so we don't need to worry. <laughs> okay, let's get started for the next module, and we'll finish the 12.30. Probably we finish five more, uh, five minutes earlier. I need to drive to the downtown to meet uh, the guy uh, running a drone deliver program. So in this module, we're going to cover the systems. So remember, I told you the S here stands for system. We look at it as a system. So we need to have a system point of view. Okay, so. Then, this one is free chapter. This is version one of the, cha of the textbook. The one we circulated is second edition. This is the first edition. I already put the, all PDFs of this one in the directory, okay? So go through the first cha chapter two regarding elements. Okay, do go through them, okay? So the main purpose of this uh, deck of slides is to explain the system elements. So your quiz will have something there. You need to fill up all the bullet points with proper names. The order is not important, OK? So in terms of um, table contents, uh, so we understand what makes up of an armenial system. So we talked about armenial systems, motivations, we talk about uh, classifications, applications, okay? There is this. So now it's time to look into the drone itself. So you can see in the first week we already covered a lot. So you can see this course is different to other uh, one day type of professional training program. So we are more systematic. We learn almost every aspect. Okay? So you can see our one week lecture will cover almost everything. So starting from next week, we are cover other aspects. Okay? So don't miss the class. It will be useful to you. So 
Then we talk about fixed wing versus vertical takeoff and landing, and uh, command and control elements, communication data links, payloads, launch and recovery. That's very important, right? You launch it, you need to land it, right? So, so it's called, usually called launch and recovery. Uh. And another important part is human elements. We have a dedicated module on that. Okay? From this point, I need to make the following statement that you will never forget, okay? And don't forget. So every unmanned system has at least one man behind. <laughs> it sounds very strange. It is a reality, it's true. You don't want any unmanned system that's totally unmonitored by a human. 100% unmanned is very scary, you don't want it. Yeah, you don't want it, you don't want it. So then, when you have human in the loop, no matter at what level, then human may make error. They may not have enough sleep last night, or not recover from the drunk dinner or whatever, and all you under, so like DUI. <laughs> okay. Pilot under influence. Great. Piloting, yeah, P P U I. <laughs> okay, a drone under influence. So, but it's interesting to to mention a little bit further. It's not self promotion of my work. Uh, we recently got a small ground to talk about uh, 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 something in line with what we just discussed about human and machine. It's called consequence aware. Consequence aware flight. So, so the drones can choose not to listen to a pilot's command. If we can put dry pilots uh, the wrist watch, the eye watch signal shared with the drone, drone can infer you are mad or crazy. You give me such a crazy command. I'll smooth out. <laughs> Don't follow that. Or give a warning. Are you sure you want me to fly like that? You know. Yeah, you can. They can. Drones can reject. So that kind of thing. It's becoming a, a cutting edge research. First step towards Skynet, Doctor Chen. Skynet. Okay. <laughs> I choose not to listen to you. It's not very interesting. So, that kind of feedback, so, uh, anyway, so just telling you that there are many things in here. Each one can be uh, like a week-long lecture on that, and in fact, we are quite trying to expand it. So, we, we try to have a holistic view of the, the system level, then we zoom in each individual element and have an expanded discussion, okay? So, how many systems? So you should have what? I would like to start with payload. So, <clears throat> but depends on what you look. You may say anything is important here. Of course, everything is important here. But from my, as a researcher, my point of view is payload is important. <coughs> payload dis determines the purpose. Why you fly? A lot of people publish papers flying a drone in a better way, but they forgot to ask, flying for what? What's the mission? So payload will determine that mission, okay? To do something useful. So I would like to say on the payload. So in fact, you know, I said to you as a drone entrepreneur, you want to fly a drone to make money, then you say the drone only can fly without any payload on it. By the way, camera is one of the payloads, okay? I put a methane sniffer is one of the payloads. So what else? If you have a new idea on payload, 
you have a new market sector. You agree? Yes? Okay. <coughs> so I emphasize the payload because we are having an entrepreneurship spirit here. So always think about mm, we can do something unique and useful so that people are willing to pay for our service. Especially this is a new service and nobody else can do it. Can you? So think that way, okay? Um, don't say, oh, I buy a camera from uh, Walmart and put on the underneath the drone and take pictures for you. Many other people can do the same. Why you? Okay? Because we're, we're undergrads and we work for free. Um, the cost is a factor, yes. <laughs> yes. Could be a factor. But I prefer to have an innovative idea. So that's why entrepreneurship and, uh, and uh, the word innovation and entrepreneurship is hand in hand. If you don't have innovation, you don't have a reason to become an entrepreneur. Okay? Or you become a, a, another plumber. This is a pure service. Okay? We want to do some innovative things to provide a new service. And also people want it. So, so we'll get to that point later on. Okay? But um, the, this is a launch and a recovery. Human element, I talked about it. Command and control is a dedicated lecture on that. Uh, the aircraft itself, like aerodynamic configurations, uh, motors, propellers, engines, okay, calm data link, okay. So the drone usually, the drone usually you have two links, okay. One is calm link, one is data link. So calm link is the RC link. You give command to the drone, you joystick it. Another one is the drone will send back the information of their status, then displayed on the GCS. What is GCS? Ground Control Station. So these are the UAS elements. So of course, you can zoom in each one. It's very rich. Uh, lots, of com lots of knowledge in there. And uh, <clears throat> so, if we use our United States uh, Department of Defense classification, so it's usually group one is less than 20 pound, 20 to 55 pound, group two, so airspeed must also be uh, limited to 100 knots, so one knot is one nautic miles per hour is like uh, uh, this 6,000 feet per hour. This is not very fast. So um, one mile per hour is one mile per hour. It's, it's smaller than this, okay? So the knot is faster than MPH, okay, MPH. Uh, nautic, mile, nautic mile is 1.852 km, okay? It's all about 15 percent more than MPH. So knots is used differently, way. and nautic miles is longer than a mile, 15 percent longer. So just to let you know, okay? Uh huh. So MSL is called mean sea level, mean sea level. AGL is above ground level, okay? Above ground level. So then our categories is group one and two, okay? One and two. Okay, so command and control elements consider all the pilots and ground control station, okay? okay. Communication, data link, line of sight versus beyond line of sight. So the communication range could be several miles or many, many miles. So payload, there are different ty types. 
electrical optical, thermal infrared, spectro, and laser. Okay, laser. Launch and the recovery and the human elements. So these are the <coughs> elements we are going to talk about today. Okay. <coughs> And um, my group is 2010, we published a paper on a literature review for all the pilots for small and many aero vehicles. And these two guys are former PhD students and uh, I was in his committee and both of them are professors in the United States uh, Research University, San UT San Antonio. This is um, Kansas, University of Kansas. So they have their own labs and PhD students as well right now. So this one is uh, regarding uh, low cost inertial measurement units, the IMUs, and always the literature review. We evaluated several of them and make a comparison. So this is also 2010 ish, okay? So we, we published these two papers, and people appreciate our efforts, <coughs> and still widely uh, cited our work, our this work. So now we are going to talk about uh, uh, line of sight versus uh, beyond line of sight. Okay, beyond line of sight. Line of sight uh, is uh, operating the. Uh, U.S. by direct radio waves, oh, sorry, uh, direct radio waves. Civilian line of sight operation uh, at usually these 900, 900 megahertz, uh, 2.4 gigahertz. So the Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi is 2.4 gigahertz. And sometimes we use uh, 5.8 gigahertz, okay? <laughs> So why we use higher uh, <coughs> frequency is because the, 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 the throughput is higher, okay? Like a megabytes per second is much higher, okay? So, so just so you know that uh, in our drone, we usually focus on this f uh, three uh, frequencies, okay? Three frequencies. Um, so these frequencies is considered as unlicensed industrial, scientific, and medical ISM frequencies. So uh, FCC allows people to use, okay? So there are some other ranges, okay? Other ranges that you need license. You can use this range, okay? So if you emit a frequency like this inside here, this range, if you are not licensed, you will get penalty, okay? It's a violation of law, actually, okay? And also, not only frequency, but also strength, strength. If you have something powerful, okay, um, then you have to register with the local police department. So imagine a person cannot have a, a radio frequency emitter emitted in the air, having a personal st a radio station uh, so that you cover many, many miles range, people can receive your waves. That's not allowed. You, you know, there's some limit about the power you can transmit. Because if it's high enough, you need, you, uh, you influence so many people, then you need a license approval process. So the current limit, to my knowledge, is one watt. So if anything above 1.0 watt of transmission power, it must be registered with local police department. So you can imagine that most of our, uh, the antenna, the power is less than, less than one watt, okay? So on the other hand, sometimes they use what they call directional tracking system to very narrow. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about communication part later, okay? 
beyond line of sight, so it's uh, a long distance, like many, many miles away. So the range, co so there are military beyond visual line of sight operations. Usually use uh, satellite uh, using the encrypted uh, Q-band in the 12 to 18 gigahertz range. So, uh, so in the launch phase, they use line of sight, then transfer <coughs> to beyond line of sight data link. Okay? So this is more on the military side. Military side. For civilian side, right now, okay, people are discussing about using 4G network, okay? So using that as a beyond the line of sight communication channel, okay? So um, the, when drone is take off, the drone has a, a basically a, a 3G GSM there and. So it's like uh, having a phone always on, right? So have a communication, okay? So, but for other communication part, I don't have a very good solution here regarding civilian, non-military, okay? Non-military, long distance communication means, okay? So we are still looking into the options, okay? Uh, Derek Hollenbeck is my new PhD student. He is more knowledgeable regarding this long distance communication beyond line of sight. Okay, so I'll invite him to give the class uh, lecture on beyond visual line of sight on the UTM. UTM, I mean UTM. It's called Amman Aero Systems Traffic Management. Traffic Management. And I sent him last November to the UTM conference. Uh, he can, he have a very updated information for you. But it's still going on about the UTM and even about its communication options. Okay. So when we talk about uh, this communication, we need to ask about uh, a few questions when you decide what kind of communication. So it's like a throughput, antenna size, and susceptibility to rain fade. So this is more susceptible. So this is like a, a 20, 15, 5 gigahertz. So this is here. Throughput is lower. This is higher. Okay. So that's why 5 gigahertz is higher. So in my house, the, my cable uh, modem has two uh, channels. One is uh, 2.4 gigahertz, one is 5 gigahertz. So when you are distance is close, you can switch to 5 gigahertz. So then the data rate is very high, like three, five times higher. Uh, but if you do regular 2.4 Wi-Fi, and then the throughput is lower, okay? okay? But distance can be lower. You can go to two rooms away, still you have signal. But five gig, maybe only one room within a small room. So, so this is consistent to this lower throughput, okay? Uh, higher frequency. Higher frequency, higher throughput, okay? Antenna size the same. You need a larger antenna in here, this small antenna. Higher frequency, smaller. And also uh, less uh, susceptible to the rain fade. So the media, not just air, you have rain, it will change its fading. Fading is the signal loss, okay? So, but you can read more regarding the unbiased review of all these different options, different bands. KU band is 15 gigahertz is used in the military, okay? For the encrypted communication. So, like this one. 12 to 18 is here. 12 to 18. Ah, uh, here, 18 is here. X to KU band. Uh, 12 probably is here, yeah, KU band. Okay, so, 
what is VLOS, what is uh, BVLOS? So right now for small and aircraft system, it is required by the FAA to have a, a human observer to keep an eye contact with the drone all the time. So if something happens, you have safety pilots, okay? So for beyond the your line of sight flights, uh, we don't have a real <laughs> Uh, uh, usable rules in place yet, so things are still developing. And probably uh, there is a targeted deadline to have the UTM, the rules are in place. Do you know what's that day? Year 2020 is the target date. 2020. So by that time we'll have a new campus and also probably the new sets of uh, rules for BV loss flights. It's significant in the sense that you don't see your aircraft, but it's flying somewhere. It may do something harmful to people there, you know. What if you lose it? You know, how to guarantee it's safe? A lot of interesting questions there. And also people talking about security. So if somebody can hijack into your data channel and command it, and uh, uh, there was a news in the, in, uh, in the media saying that uh, somebody hijacked a uh, uh, drone and keep it, okay? Somewhere I forgot. So it's possible in principle. Because beyond your line of sight, your link to you and your drone is only by communication channel and it's data send them back okay so if somebody hijack and they can just you know maneuver it in the way they want okay it's possible though it's possible mm -hmm. so with that I, I hope you understand this the components in there so next I'm going to give you an uh, idea of Landsat, okay, Landsat. So because we have a satellite flying, you know, we may use satellite communication. But the satellite, for Landsat, the main thing we want to understand is the optical response, uh, spectral response of the surface of the, th of the Earth. So, uh, so you see that Landsat, they have uh, operational land or imager, thermal infrared sensors. So it's uh, pretty recent, okay? And it's beneficial to a lot of people, okay? You can check this one. So what, when we, land surveying satellite, when we talk about satellite, think about the drones is kind of moving satellites, so all satellite in, on demand, okay? Okay? So, but, using satellite for what? So you basically put different cameras with different what? Wavelengths. Wavelengths. So the coastal blue, green, red, these are visible, visible ones. And when we talk about, so the two parameters, one is wavelengths, another one is resolution. Resolution. So it's a, a resolution, it's spatial resolution, okay? Uh, so it's 30 meters by 30 meters box, okay? Your one pixel is 30 meters by 30 meters. So of course this cannot be used for agriculture because 30 meters by 30 meters is one pixel. You know, inside 30 meters by 30 meters are too many things there. So the resolution is not enough. So we should be able to see the leaves of trees. That resolution, flying over that. So we can do it using drones, okay? So different, uh, you know, different, uh, uh, different wavelengths will do different things, like near infrared, like thermal, okay? Thermal. Thermal meaning uh, you can see the, uh, the temperature of the object, okay? Of the object, okay? It is like 100 meters resolution, it's smaller. Okay. Uh, 
panchromatic, meaning mixture all this wavelengths. It's, uh, it's 0 0.5 to 0 0.68. 680 is here. 0.5 is around here. Okay, so the mixture of all of them, panchromatic. This is called short wave infrared. Okay, it's from this one to this. 1.5 to 2.2 uh, micrometer, micrometer. So it's also 30 meters. Thermo, short wave infrared, and uh, this is a uh, Ceres. This is the range, okay. And also the uh, coastal blue, coastal blue range is 0.43 to 0.45. Okay. All eyes can only perceive this, this range, RGB, huh? red, green, blue. Okay. Beyond this red is called infrared, okay? <coughs> near infrared. So all these things are called infrared, okay? infrared. Okay. So infrared imaging is considered as useful, important. Okay. Important. So what's the use of that? So let's say something like that. So when you put a camera, RGB, okay, RGB in here. So coast, the, the first one, the band one, the different bands, the first one in the wavelengths in this range is coastal and aerosol studies, uh, okay? Um, so that's for that. For blue is for uh, bathymetric mapping. Like uh, you have a lake, you can see the different depths, you have different blue, right? Color. Uh, distinguishing soil from uh, vegetation and uh, deciduous from uh, coniferous vegetation. Okay? So whether the leaves are getting, um, getting uh, dead falling off from the branches. So those can understand. Green emphasizes the peak vegetation, useful for assessing a plant vigor, so the health, growing dynamics. Red discriminates vegetation slopes, okay, slopes. Okay. And near infrared can emphasize um, biomass content and shorelines. Short wave infrared can discriminate moisture content of soil and vegetation. This is amazing. I tell you something. So we flew in. We flew in a, in a vernal pool. Vernal pool meaning some pool and with water and without water. At some seasons full of water and some seasons just dry. But after it's, it's dried, so from our naked eyes. We see this pond and that pond, there's no difference. It's just dry. But apparently, different sizes, they, they used to contain different level of water. So then they evaporate the water or uh, gets um, into the, uh, the soil. Uh, so on the surface, the soil is all dry and naked eye don't see difference. But from within, the, the SWIR camera, we see the clear difference, okay, clear difference. And we have a camera like this in our lab, okay. So then improve the moisture content of soil vegetation and the cloud penetration, you know, see through the clouds. So we have an experiment on that as well. To see, um, we have, a, remember we have a smoking, uh, um, and for, we have a we have a a smoker. Okay, we close the door, then we put some uh, wood chips, then smoke the meat. So then the smoke is very very dense. You don't see anything inside; just smoke, right? But underneath the camera, like this, we see the meat inside. So see through the fog. So it's very interesting. But the camera is very expensive, $16,000 a piece. 
16,000. Okay. Uh, so I'm not going to do other explanation like uh, panchromatic is for very sharp image definition. Okay. And uh, serious to detection of serious cloud contamination. Uh, thermal, uh, 100 meters resolution, thermal mapping and estimate soil moisture as well. Because different moisture level, the temperature will be different. So of course, if you have a piece of soil, wet and versus dry, the temperature will be different. And this, this area, this is the same and improved, improved meaning more sensitive, more sensitive. So the reason I mentioned this one because the camera is so important, okay? Camera is so important. So this is a part of our majority of the payloads. We have some other payloads, but camera is still very important. So remember I told you that uh, uh, the satellite, automated we can replace satellite. So what satellite can do, we also can do using drones. So, is your question? You know how you said you need to see your drone live sight? Uh huh. Uh huh. You would have to camera that and overlook the drone and how it's going. You still need to be live sight. People try to um, abuse that. <laughs> uh, people try it, and then uh, FAA said no. So you have to use your neck eye, you kind of you equip it with a uh, binocle uh, you know, or you, even in the moving truck uh, is still questionable. People say, oh, I don't stand here and watch my drone. I, I just move with my drone and drive. Uh, uh, you know, this is not also not okay. You need a special permission. What's your question? <laughs> no, no, not allowed. Not allowed, not allowed, not allowed, not allowed. So, um, so, so because the camera is so popular, is widely used, so you should understand, it's now possible. So let me show you a thing I have to share here. Um, what if you make your drone tow a giant flag? Uh, people probably also doing this, so. Um, so you can see the drone at yeah. beyond line of sight <laughs> distances. Um, so I have a SWIR web page set up, and remember this is uh, this is uh, 2014, okay? 2014, okay? Uh, we did this one. I called it. We made history at that time to fly the mission in the UC Merced scientific data drone with red, green, blue thermal infrared, near infrared, and SWIR remote sensing payloads. Nobody at that time can do that in a routine way, okay? And so then you will see that this will make the vernal pool, the water contents, much easier to check there's a gradient in there, right? The moisture gradient. But your naked eyes, you don't see it. RGB, you see all dry, you know? Isn't this important? Yes. So say for example, you have two pieces of land. So you want to irrigate it. But before that, you should check who, really, who needs water more. You know, that will tell you better. Is that true? Um, yes, it's true. <laughs> so, um, so I put some updates and pictures. Uh, didn't show up. I think there's something wrong. Uh, yeah, movie clips. Uh, what? Where is the movie clips? You know this guy? This is the Aggie are sitting in our lab. Good job. That's my voice. Oh, there's uh, Yanni. 
Oh, yes, it is. The first short wave you can read. Recognize Yanni by his hat. Yeah. Yanni? Yeah. yeah. He's working for the project The Wind. I haven't heard from him in a while. Oh, he came back last, uh, Robust and Rips. Yeah, he came back. Yeah. So we have a, a pretty good network of uh, previous students. And uh, so, because we are playing majority of our drones at the fixed wing, not the fixed wing, sorry. That's a fixed wing. We were an expert on fixed wing. Uh, we are also now f expert on rotor wing. So in the next, I'm going to flash you, flash you a little bit faster regarding what we have. So it's getting very double E flavor. Oh, we'll take a look. So this is our, uh, when I was in, uh, CSOS stands for Center for Self-Organizing and Intelligent Systems. So we, at that time, built an a octal-rotor octal vertical takeoff and a landing drone platform. Okay? So these are all abbreviations, see? VTOL and CSOS. So then I hope we can stand here and do some um, recognition of all, all the components, okay? All right, so basically we have different components in here. This is called a main board, okay, main board. Uh, main board is basically for the autopilots, okay, autopilots. And uh, so of course you need to make the motor to run and you have propeller. So uh, this is kind of a, a, a electronic speed controller called ESC, ESC. Electronic speed controller. Okay, electronic. So, so, Autopilot instruct ESC, ESC controls the motor, motors brings propeller, so you can, you can move, okay? So this is a center board, okay? But on top of that, so you have, you have four of them, okay? You have four of them, you do, you do quad. But you need to know there are other things there. So first of all is IMU board. You know your measurement unit. You know your measurement unit the board, that can tell you the attitude information like your pitch yaw and position x, y, z in the space, okay, in the space. So this is for the IMU, you know your <coughs> measurement unit. And you should have 900 megahertz modem to get this information transmitted through the air. This red one is considered as communication link or safety link by the 900 megahertz modem to receive and transceive, so it's two directional, okay? It's a transceiver, transmission and receive, and uh, so there's antenna in here to be able to transmit and uh, receive as well. We'll elaborate about this antenna later, okay? So you have laptop serving as ground control station, okay? Okay. So then this ground control through human or through the computer, you can give command to this one, okay? To shut off the propeller, stop it. Another one is the 2.4 gigahertz remote control transmitter, okay? So you can. You can command this one through here, or you can command here. So here, this is called safety. So I probably said it wrong. This is not called safety. This is called data link. Called data link, the exchange information. This one is safety to use a, re, uh, a remote controller. RC is a remote control. So for the safety uh, pilot. So you have a 2.4 gigahertz uh, receiver, and then it's transmitter. 
Okay. Okay. And I think this is only one, one direction, uh, one direction. Okay. Not two directions. So. The last but not least is the GPS. GPS stands for Global Positioning System through many satellites. So we take GPS board for granted. We take GPS for granted. We don't need to understand the signal between satellites and GPS receiver board. They miniaturize it in this way. We just use it. So you don't really know what's inside here. You don't need to know. You only need to know what's the interface here, how you can pull out data from it, how to quantify it, and the accuracy of it, and so on and so forth. So today, using the GPS board, IMU board, is not like 10 years ago. People will work on IMU board and GPS board and hack into the technology. It's considered as valid effort. Today, you don't. Today the motor, like wall outlets in there, you use, uh, you plug in, you use it, you take it for granted. You don't ask what's be behind that. Where is the substation and generator? You, you don't need to ask. Just use it. Get my message. So in the drone, even the whole drone to me is just a system, a platform. Okay, so. Understand from the system point of view is very important, okay? Very important. If you feel something wrong, throw away the GPS board and put a new one. Is that right? Yes. But you need to understand the interface and the specs or their specification parameters and so on and so forth. So you need to understand. Uh, the 900 megahertz uh, data link here was the data rate. So you don't add too much data into that. They cannot do the job. You know the limitations. You know the capacities and fading characteristics. So what if you don't have a line of sight? So you, what if you have a reflection? Okay, uh, some trees in between you and your drone, and there's trees in between. So what's the consequence for that? Uh, and so on and so forth. We're going to explain uh, about it. So with, I think with Vito, uh, this probably is what we already have. Okay. Okay. So the elaboration of this figure is in the following pages. So. Uh, So I don't want to read too much about it. There's something missing in this one. Did you see? There's no battery in there. So battery is also part of it, the power system. Okay. So powered by the LiPo battery, uh, lithium polymer battery fixed with the bottom of the center using the bottom of the uh, round plane. Uh, on the center round plane, there are three boards, control board, IMU, and GPS board, okay? And also eight motor controllers at the edge. The main component of a controller board is this, this, and this is basically embedded computing board. By the way, Mesa box is embedded computing. So you have a CPU, you have a microprocessor, you do some, execute some codes, do something, you know. So, so that's another ARM type of uh, CPU. And this resources on the CPU is like a 512K flash, a 10 bit analog digital converter, and digital analog converter. Okay? So, those packages. Motor control using I square C bus and using a PWM control the separate brushless DC motor, BLDC. Uh, BLDC. Um, so this is just a, a description. And then uh, uh, those for the 
whole system. But the, what, what, what are the sensors? So you first you may have a pressure sensor uh, mounted on the controller board, measure the attitude information more exactly than the GPS attitude information, so the height. So it's more sensitive to the pressure change when you have different height, okay? Uh, so it's more accurate than GPS. So the IME board provides acceleration, angular rates, magnetic information by accelerometer, gyro, a magnetometer, and a separator. So each one has three directions, okay? X, Y, Z. Okay, so then how many directions? You have nine. So this is already nine degrees of freedom in information. So then you need to piece all them together to recover what is your um, position and attitude. Okay, position and attitude of the drone. Okay, GPS received from a satellite sent to this uh, chip. Camera is mounted on the bottom to capture the image, store the image at 8 gig volume, secure digital SD card. So these are the standard description. And then how it works, we will continue. Uh, so position information is acquired through the GPS and also pressure sensor, you get height. While the acceleration angular rate information acquired via the IMU, using the information to judge the current position and speed information, compare them with the set waypoints. So where you should visit those points. So based on the mission, you plan your mission. We are going to go through this cycle later on, so don't worry about it. So it's more abstract to you at this level. We zoom into the detail, maybe will make you saturated. So. Uh, but I think you just read, and you have a lot of questions around that, and all those questions will be eventually answered. So you really start to learn how it works, okay? What happened first, then what, then what, then what, <laughs> okay? okay? So we'll piece every, all this information together. But it's described by this one. I can understand.